What's the problem with the cupcakes? No more. There's only five. Someone, someone ate more than they should have. No. How many's left? Five, but we cooked eleven. We baked eleven. So where did the other cupcake go? Don't know. I ate two. I only ate two. Are you telling the truth? Yes, I ate two. We don't know who's eating this last cupcake. No, I had three. You had three? Yeah. How did you have three? Because it was way more fruit and then I had the cupcake. And then yesterday I had a cupcake. And then the day before yesterday. You've been eating all the cupcakes, haven't you? I knew it was you. So the moral of the story, guys, with regards to cupcakes is track what you're eating when you're eating it or even before you've, you've consumed it, track in advance because you'll forget what you've had and you'll find it difficult to track accurately. Another thing I, I want to add to that is that if you have tracked well for a few days and then you kind of go off the boil, you miss a day or you really over consume, what does it matter? A lot of people use that as an excuse to say, right, I'm just gonna leave it for this week, I'll start again next week, or they stop altogether. That's just silly. Draw a line under it. Pick yourself up the next day. I'm only interested on the day that I'm currently in. So, start afresh, hit a new diary the next day, and go from there. Tea. Tell them what we're doing, Chris. Tell them how we're spending our, our Wednesday afternoon. Bit of target practice, you know, got to work on the hand eye coordination. How far we're going to stand 30 so, yards back. So basically, yards. guys, we are trying to get this into this bin from the other corner of the car park. Chris, as you may or may not know, Place for uh, the Aberdeen Tigers. Roughnecks. Roughnecks. <laughs> the Aberdeen Roughnecks. Hut Hut 24. <laughs> so we've got a professional in the in the team here, and then you've got me. I'd never even seen one of these until Chris arrived at the gym. So it's me for you, Chris, is it? Show it's done. Hey, check it. Check it, put the place up What's the technique here? Tell us the technique for throwing it <laughs> Bit of luck So, from what I know Ring finger, pinky finger Last couple bits of the straps Last finger should lead the ball, should be roughly your index finger. And let your hand kind of hang where you're aiming for. This is an but, educational video, this, not, is it? It's not worked yet.
Not a shot. Took long enough. Effort, mate. Well done. How you feeling? Game ball, that's mine. Do you feel you achieved something today? Got a good 1% every day. 1% every day. <laughs> right, now it's my go to try and match you. It's yeah. all it took me, it took the motivation. I get one, you get one. That's how we work. Guys, how you doing? Just having some melon. One of the habits that I have tried to put in place since the start is to snack on fruits more frequently. I noticed I wasn't eating a lot of fruit on the latter stages of last year. I really wanted to address that, make sure I was getting more nutrients in my diet and to get more fruit in, I've just used times where I'm maybe a little bit peckish and I'm looking for a snack that maybe would have snacked on other things to eat some fruit. And I was just reading a study that says it takes anywhere between 18 to 254 days to basically cement a habit. The average time it takes somebody to develop a new habit and stick to it consistently in this study was 66 days. You know it's a habit when you are doing it subconsciously or you're not thinking about doing it. For example, habits like you, you get up in the morning, you brush your teeth. You don't really think about it. You don't think about why you're doing it. You just do it. Or when you go in your car, first thing you do is you put your seatbelt on. You don't think about why you're doing it. You, you just do it. Well, these are habits that you've totally ingrained and you don't need to remind yourself about. I'm probably still in that stage where I'm reminding myself to go and get fruit or buy fruit as well as getting up in the morning and having a glass of water. So what I'm trying to say here, guys, is it takes time to build habits. It times, takes time to change habits as well. So be patient. You're not going to be perfect at it. You're not going to get there right away. I'm not getting there right away. Eventually, I will get to the point where it becomes a habit where I don't even think about it and it, I just do it. And I'm sure you guys can relate to that. You'll have habits that you've continually stuck to and you'll be working on things, no doubt yourself. But be patient, stick with it, remember your goals, remember why you're doing it, remember how it's gonna make you feel when you get there. So guys, here are my week five progress shots. In the first five weeks, I have lost 4.3 kilograms and I've taken five centimeters off my waist. I'll continue to take progress videos and photos every two weeks just to show the difference that I'm making 
and just to back up some of the other readings such as the weighing scales. It's not just about the scales. For me, it's massively about the pictures, how I fit in clothes and how I feel. Guys, that's been a tough week of training. I've done five sessions. Usually I'll do four. Joined in the boot camp class. Could have rested, probably was on the verge of should I rest, should I train? Was really motivated to train, felt full of energy, but knew that I was a bit banged up as well. So I think I've done the right thing. Didn't train at the highest intensity, but did something. And now I'm gonna take two days rest really recover for Monday session next week. Hopefully I'll feel fresh by then and I'll be able to perform at a good level. That's basically why we don't train every day. All right, and that's maybe why I shouldn't have trained today because you've got to match your training alongside your recovery and your recovery comes from your nutrition. How much uh, goodness you're getting from your food? Are you hitting the right amount of calories? to recover optimally, are you eating the right amount of protein to recover optimally? When you're on a diet, you're obviously restricting a lot of these things. So actually when you're dieting, maybe you should reduce the, the training volume that you do, or maybe you should reduce the intensity slightly across the week because your recovery won't be as good through the foods that you're eating and the calories you're consuming. A lot of people get really motivated, they get in that mindset, they wanna lose weight and they end up doing even more than what they would do during the periods where they're eating higher calories. I get that and I, I, I was in that sort of mindset myself today, but it's really important that you try and listen to your body, you respect the process and you just work to a sensible balance. On the topic of recovery, it's not just your nutrition that's important, it's also things like your sleep, your hydration. You know, getting optimal hours of sleep, I try and aim for seven hours a night, sometimes I'll get less than that and I really feel it. I feel it when I'm training, I feel it when I'm warming up. I don't feel as recovered. Sleep is definitely something to try and improve on if you're not recovering well from sessions. The other simple one is hydration. Stay hydrated, drink plenty of water. If you're constantly dehydrated, your pee is a funny orange color, then you know you need to drink more water. So drink more water. And that's really the basis behind trying to recover optimally from training for me. Hope that helps. <laughs>
that time again, is it, Callie? Yes. Every Saturday? Yeah. Two till four. It's two hours. Two hours of cartwheels and handstands. Yeah. And flips. And bars. And push-ups and a lot of things. Callum, who ate all the cupcakes? I ate two. I said I ate three at the end, but I actually ate two. But Callum... And I ate two. And Lewis ate one. But Callum, you're saying you ate two now, but you, you said... Yeah, you but three. then I ate three. I said I ate three, but then I told Mama just to be sure, but then she said I ate two. So who ate that extra cupcake? The extra, mommy had two, I had two, you had one, one, and Lewis had one. So me and mommy had two. So, so, so it's mommy that ate the extra cup. What's a balanced diet, Callum? Eating burgers, pizza, and fish and chips all the time. Callum. <laughs> what is a, you know that's not true. What is a balanced diet? It is true. He told me. So I told you that a balanced diet, right, was eating burgers, chips, and pizza all the time. Yes. Oh, Callum. A balanced diet is what? Tell us, come on. Vegetables, protein, fat. It's a bit of everything, isn't it? Yes. So would it be a balanced diet if I was eating just Vegetables and protein. No. No. Why not? Because sometimes you have to have something sweet or something. So, so, so a balanced diet would be some a diet where it includes all foods, yeah? Yeah. Lots of healthy, nutritious foods. But also some of the yeah. not so nutritious foods, yeah. or the not considered not so healthy foods, but foods that we really, 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 really want to eat. Yeah. So, oh, it's bright. It is bright. So including all these foods in a sensible way is a balanced diet. Would you say that's right? Yeah. <laughs> What's your favourite food? Right, we're going to talk about Callum's top three or top five foods? Lasagna. <laughs> right, give me your number one top, top food. Fish and chips! Your number two favourite food? Burger! Give me your number three favourite food? Lasagna. Number four favourite food? Pizza. And your fifth favourite food, so we know your top five foods are... Um, bacon roll! That concludes Calm's top five favourite foods. Which, if you ate them all on the same day, would that be a balanced diet? No. <laughs> no, no. No. Guys, let us know what your favourite food is. Comment below. Comment!